I just lost the world war And the scene slips away To the evenness I fake It's a shit song Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrew Oje. And I'm Jay Kensler. The Middle Seas is the longest running entertainment show in the history of Marist College Television. We are here back with you again on another Thursday. And we're going to be talking about Batman v Superman. It's a big one. You don't get a lot big of big one ones over this course of the seasons. No, but usually not in March either. March it's a weird, a weird time. Weird yeah. It's interesting because I know it was originally scheduled for, for May 6th, which is the day Civil War comes out, and then they just oh, ran they like, because Captain America Winter Soldier was so good. Chicken. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll have to wait another day for that DC Marvel yeah, straight someday. fight. But today, we got some DC. We do. First time we're talking about a DC uh, yeah. movie on the show, yeah, really. Yeah, the last one was Man of Steel, which was... Was pre, before we even were yeah. in college, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know what the middle seats were. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, DC movie? Are we counting I mean, Dark Knight trilogy? Yeah. Uh, okay, then... I just that. realized how easy <laughs> the answer that is. Yeah, if we're not counting that, then... I don't know, because it's been a while since I've seen the yeah. 89 Batman, so... The 89 and Batman is pretty good. Uh, if we're not counting so, that, I don't know. I think I like the original Superman. I like Superman 2. I don't even know. Again, I've seen that it's been a long finish, time. To be honest. It's been a long I time. think the point we're trying to make is that the DC track record is not as good They're as the Marvel struggling. track record. They are really struggling. We'll get more into that later. <laughs> Before we get to the biggest showdown of 2016 so far, we've got to slow down and talk some news. It's the top five. Yes, we do. Biggest news stories of the week, and they are ranked in ascending order. This movie doesn't scrape the bottom of the barrel. This movie isn't the bottom of the barrel. This movie isn't below the bottom of the barrel. This movie doesn't deserve to be mentioned in the same sentence with barrels. That's what Roger Ebert wrote back in 2001 when he confronted the cinematic nuclear bomb of Freddy Got Fingered. It's safe to say that critics weren't a fan of Tom Green's 90-minute attempt at comedy as it sits in 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. Somebody out there clearly liked it a lot, however, as evidenced by this first news story. A man in North Carolina was arrested for his failure to return a VHS rented copy of Freddy Got Finger back in 2002. James Myers was pulled over by a police officer for a broken taillight, and when the cop checked his license in the database, he was forced to arrest him. The warrant was worth a misdemeanor $200 fine, although I think the real crime was the man renting Freddy Got Fingered willingly and not giving it back. It's so absurd. I just feel great Roger Ebert quote. They, it's a great quote. They had the, the great Roger Ebert yeah. quote, as always. But also, one of the things, like, they had, like, the transcript of the police officer. And the police officer went, I don't know how to tell you this, but I have to <laughs> arrest you because you did return Freddy Got Fingered. And I wonder if the guy even knew where it was. He probably, I hope he just misplaced it and didn't realize. Because yeah. if he, like, was sitting on his shelf, like, happily, bro. What an embarrassing movie, too. Like, yeah, 2000, like, 2001 brought us Lord of the Rings, The Return yeah, of the King, say, of the Rings Beautiful there. Mind, yep. a couple of other great movies, Amelie, Monsters, Inc. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and Freddy Got Fingered is what you get caught in. <laughs> right. Imagine the cop knew movies, too, and was like, dude, come on. <laughs> what are you he doing? He actually doubled the fine. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully so. I don't know. Yeah, but like... So absurd. So embarrassing. I love these kind of stories, though. It's my favorite. They're my favorite things. <laughs> but on to the next one. James Wan, director of Saw, The Conjuring, Insidious, and most recently Furious 7, was at WonderCon recently and presented a panel on The Conjuring 2. But it seemed as if the fans were more curious about his superhero directorial debut, Aquaman. He revealed a little bit that he will, in fact, reel in some of his horror roots and introduce some sea monsters to this captivating world under the sea. He continued in saying, quote, Isn't it crazy to think that we've explored space more than we've explored the depths of our ocean? Sounds like Juan has a lot of cool and creative ideas in store for us when Aquaman hits the cinema shores in summer of 2018. Um, I really like the idea that he's going to create all kinds of monsters and stuff because, first of all, the guy's he's, he's clearly a good horror director. He directed a great Furious, um, Fast and Furious installment. Mm -hmm. So I like that he's going to do this. It, and Aquaman can be, it looks like he's going to take a dark, gritty tone. And with Sea Monsters edition, I think it's going to be good. Yeah. I like where it's going. I mean, he's a promising director. I would say yeah. out of the DC slate that we have so far, he's probably the most promising director yeah, that's in there. So. He knows how to build suspense and stuff, and Fury 7 showed he can shoot action. Oh, so. yeah. He's just got oh, a yeah. lot of talent as far as framing shots and doing creative things with the camera. Yeah, I was just going to say. Which is hard to do, actually, yeah. when you think about, like, especially in the horror genre. Yeah. Especially he when some... you're just looking for different ways to make things creepy. Yeah. And listen, Aquaman's no nobody's favorite. No, and he, he Aquaman's actually, he not even, Aquaman's favorite. <laughs> he actually um, he even said that when he was being interviewed. He said like like my favorites were 
as a kid were like Batman, X-Men, Spider-Man. He's like, Aquaman was kind of like to the side of everybody's um, yeah. favorite superheroes, but he was happy to do it nonetheless, apparently. But that doesn't mean you can't find anything in it, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, I think Aquaman's a pretty cool idea. Not my favorite. Nobody, like you said, nobody's is, but um, there's not a whole lot of, like, deep sea, like, water kind of superheroes. Yeah, and Momoa's so. an interesting choice. I don't, know I, think he's a, I don't know if he's who I would pick, personally. I like it. I think he looks really cool. And it's different than, the like, the pretty boy one we got showing up here. I like the different take on it. Yeah, I kind of like the pretty boy, though. He's fighting a shark. Look at that. Yeah, but he's too big. Sharks I want a manly cool. guy fighting a shark. Anyways, <laughs> on the heels of the release of Batman vs. Superman, another high-profile project featuring the Cape, Cape Crusader quietly snuck their trailer out to the masses. Here's a look at the Lego Batman movie. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. I saved the city again today. I think you would have been really proud. There you are. <laughs> oh, Alfred, I am so sorry. I have incredible reflexes. I should have known better than to sneak up on you like that. Were you looking at the old family pictures again? No, I wasn't. Sir, I've seen you go through similar phases in 2016 and 2012 and 2008 and 2005 and 1997 and 1995 and 1992 and 1989 and that weird one in 1966. I have aged phenomenally. Do you want to talk about how you're feeling? What? No! I don't want to do that! Sir. No. Sir. No, 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 no. Sir. No, 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 Gosh, I hope we're recording that. We're not Alfred. What did I say? A B R. Always be recording. Reprising his role from the Lego movie, Will Arnett voices Lego Batman in a story that asks, Can Batman be happy? Michael Sarah is Robin. Ralph Fiennes is Alfred. Zach Galifianakis is the Joker. Chris McKay is directing. Phil Lord and Chris Miller are producing. The movie arrives on February 10th, 2017. Well, in a film that I think is a perfect film, Will Arnett was one of the parts that stole the show in the Lego movie. Yeah. His, his great, Batman, great his Lego Batman is unbelievable every yeah, time he's on really, screen. Really good. Interesting Great idea to, to stretch the concept further. However, everything I've seen so far has made me very excited. Yeah, for this. I like I like both trailers now that they gave us two in one week, and I think I think the casting is really spot on. Yeah, Michael Sarah is the Joker. Zach Galifianakis, um, no, Michael Sarah is Robin. Zach Galifianakis is the Joker. Excuse me. And Rosaria Dawson's Batgirl. I didn't yep. mention that. Really, really, really good casting, and it looks really funny already. Yeah, so. and I, I I wouldn't expect anything less from Lord and Miller's name somewhere yeah. behind it. Um, there's enough that has to be said about the Batman character. You know, you can do a bunch of things oh, with yeah. him. But we've never seen him in, like, Quite kind of like a... This comedic... In a comedic yeah. way. And I think it kind of fits the it kind does. of tone of Will are... Arnett's reading of the lines and stuff like that. Very subtly, he's still doing the gravelly Batman thing. But yeah. it's kind of, like, snarky and sarcastic, like he knows yeah. how to do. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. I think it's going to be... Um... A really good take on, especially like for a Lego universe. Yeah. I like what they're doing with I it. I hope so, yeah. So, but time to change the pace a bit of this superhero bonanza of an episode. Many of you may recognize Oscar Isaac from the over $2 billion grossing Star Wars movie this past winter. The rising star played the calm, cool, and collected rebel fighter pilot Poe Dameron. But if that's all you've seen of him, you should really check out sci-fi thriller Ex Machina, where he plays the mysterious tech whiz Nathan. Ex Machina was one of my favorite films of last year, and Oscar Isaac will be teaming up with its director, Alex Garland, once again in a book-to-film adaptation of Annihilation. The movie focuses on four women who take a dangerous mission into their own hands in a world where the laws of nature don't apply. It is tentatively set to be released at some time next year, but you can catch Oscar Isaac in the next X-Men movie this summer. As Apocalypse. Yeah, as the main, as the main antagonist yeah. of uh, Apocalypse, which I think is an interesting choice because he's, he's very likable in... Um, Star Wars, and he's, I mean, he can, he's a bit of a... He can play a jerk. Yeah, he can. I was looking for a... He's kind of a, a jerk in Ex Machina. Yeah, I was looking for a and nice way to put that. definitely a jerk in Inside Lou and Davis, which I don't I know if you've ever that. seen the Coen Brothers No, film. I didn't see that. Uh, I was looking for a nice way to um, put that for Ex Machina. Yeah, he's, um, he's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> he's a jerk. He's <laughs> a rich jerk. Um, um, but, like, like, menacing? Yeah. As, as Apocalypse wouldn't, wouldn't have been my, the first person I would have expected, but, I mean, good actor, so. Yeah. 
And as far as this project goes, Alex Garland and him clearly have something. Like, yeah. Oscar yeah. Isaac has given a bunch of great performances, and mm -hmm. Ex Machina was maybe one of his best. Yeah, I, I think he was great. He was great in it. Yeah. Domhnall Gleeson was great in it. Alicia yeah, Kander. Was great. Three so great good. lead performances. Very underrated movie if you haven't seen it from last year. But this is a very interesting concept of you know like female power, womanly mm -hmm. power. Yeah, Alex Garland. I mean, he's playing. Um, he's playing like a late husbander in the movie or something uh -huh. like that. And I think I, I think it's again it's. A, it's a good fit. It's been a proven good fit between director and actor, and with a high concept yeah, like absolutely. this. I, I don't know. I wonder if this is going to be the next, um, the next like like a Jennifer Lawrence, David O. Russell type thing. You, yeah, this is going on. Like, Jennifer like Lawrence, David O. Russell, Leonardo DiCaprio, and just Scorsese. Yeah, like the next one of this. De Niro and Scorsese. Yeah, mm -hmm. Donny Depp and Tim Burton to a lesser a, extent. A, a bigger extent. <laughs> bigger extent. Lesser <laughs> extent, quality wise. Fair, fair. DC may have ruled the weekend and is ruling the conversation right now, but let's not forget about Deadpool. The Merc with a Mouth officially became the highest grossing R-rated film of all time this past week, having grossed over $350 million in the United States alone. It's a huge victory for not only Ryan Reynolds and his uneven career, but for Marvel in general. A sequel is guaranteed and will drop sometime in 2017. I mean, there's not a lot more, to say about this, but... More Deadpool. More Deadpool. But what this has to say about R, again, R-rated superhero yeah. films, it's a, t it's a so, topic we've so been surprising. touching on the last three or four episodes. Yeah. We've right. been going back to that well. I think mean, it's shocking. Who would have told you that it looks like Deadpool's going to outgross Batman v Superman and maybe even Civil War? We don't know yet. But yeah, I mean, that would be, that that would would be pretty insane. That'd be but, pretty insane. Um, but I read somewhere it's, it's probably going to pass X-Men Days of Future Past. It's already passed a bunch of really popular superhero movies. Uh, Days of Future Past, is, yeah. Those, uh, the X-Men movies don't make that much money. Yeah, for it, some reason. I love Days of Future Past. Yeah. I thought it was great. But Deadpool's very accessible to an adult audience. You know, you don't yeah. have to be a superhero fan to like Deadpool because it's got a very slick and mean comedic sense yeah, of humor it's, it's very, that you would see in like a Judd it's, Apatow it's movie violent, or something like that. Raunchy. It's very yeah. raunchy. Yep. It's off the wall. It's unlike any of its own kin. Right, we're going to be starting to see some copycats, yeah, but this will be the one... This will be the one that reaps the benefits of being the original. Ab absolutely. Be good for Ryan Reynolds finally getting it right. Finally. <laughs> took, <laughs> took four tries. Yeah. Yeah, it took him a little while. So. Anyways. Anyways. That'll do it for the top five. Here it is. Our review of Batman v Superman v Alien v Predator v Cats v Dogs. Dawn of Justice. That whatever. Was a, I don't like the that title. Was a hell of an intro. All right. In the greatly anticipated of the live action forthcoming of Batman v Superman, outled antagonist is... I'm sorry, I don't know what the hell I just said. Out lead our lead antagonist is nothing you other wrote it. Than, than the legendary Lex Luthor. In devising his plan, he explains that the key to bringing down Superman is like a triangle. There is a clear path, a straight line, defining his weakness. Batman v Superman feels like a chiliagon, which is a thousand-sided polygon, because that's how many components they tried to cram into this superhero film, thus forging a clear, straight path to our weaknesses as well. It didn't take long for BVS to clearly show us that they have way too much to talk about in one movie. About 15 minutes in, we are given a backstory, two different motivations for hatred, a difficult love story, and an event that is not explained well and evidently surmounts to nothing. Think it sounds like a lot? It is. Just like they try to cram too many elements into the story, the scene cram, they cram the scenes as well. Snyder uses so many cuts, rushes dialogue, and every scene pretty much feels like no longer than five minutes, giving us little to no time to engage or absorb what's even happening. Much like his problem with Man of Steel, director Zack Snyder has some major pacing issues. But let's go back to the beginning. I'll try and pace this review a little bit better than Snyder did his film. We start off with Bruce Wayne's perspective of the destruction of Metropolis. In what is one of the best scenes in the movie, we see all the pain and suffering that went down on the ground and how much damage Superman did while trying to stop General Zod in the previous film. And this sparks a rage in Bruce Wayne as he tries to save people from wreckage but evidently realizes that he is ultimately powerless to these otherworldly beings they must be held accountable and cannot be allowed to run amok without repercussions. What's next? Millions. He has the power to wipe out the entire human race and if we believe there's even a 1% chance that he is our enemy, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. To destroy him. But he is not our enemy. Not today. Twenty years in Gotham, Alfred. We've seen what promises are worth. How many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? You're gonna go to war. 
One of the only parts of the script that I think makes sense is Batman's motivation. Fear is a powerful emotion, and when an alien all of a sudden comes out of hiding and practically levels a city, as an already established hero and mere man, you may feel fear and a sense of obligation to do something about it. Sure, fine. It is within the depths of the plot that this movie can go from confusing to outright sloppy and virtually senseless. We get meaningless and unclear subplots, idiotic master plans, laughable alliance reasons, and some pretty, pretty bad character writing too. I think overall the performances were fine with what the actors were given to work with. Yep, I liked Affleck, despite his borderline sociopathically written Batman. I liked Cavill, despite how Superman mopes and gripes and complains and seems suppressed throughout the entire movie. Isn't the S symbol a symbol for hope? I liked Alfred, despite him only having a few scenes, and I even liked Jesse Eisenberg's unorthodox portrayal of Lex Luthor as a young, wealthy, yet twitchy, conniving villain. It's ultimately the writing that fails to do these characters justice. We know little to nothing about Lex, except that the writers don't seem to really know anything either. But here's a clip of Eisenberg's egotistical portrayal of the always scheming youngster villain. And you will battle to the death. Black and blue, fight night. The greatest gladiator match in the history of the world. God versus man, day versus night. Son of Krypton versus Bat of Gotham. Overall, I think the acting was fine, but I even lowered my expectations a little bit after seeing the reviews, and I was still disappointed in the movie as a whole. So now I want to be a little evil myself and go over what else was so disappointing. Walking into a Batman versus Superman movie directed by Zack Snyder, what would you expect? Probably at the least some pretty fantastic visuals, some maybe epic one-liners from the heroes, and awesome fight scenes, right? Well, almost. They tried a few one-liners here and there and they just really didn't work, plain and simple. No Hulk smash or anything like that. No humor to be found anywhere, by the way. And as far as the action, considering this is the same guy who directed Watchmen in 300, damn, what happened? Other than maybe one and a half scenes, the action wasn't even well choreographed. How do you mess that up? If all else fails, you at least need to have some breathtaking action. Nope, instead we got some scuffles, more building smashing, some borderline sadistic moments, and just basically being let down time after time, with the exception of a few good moments here and there. So what did the movie accomplish? Yes, it visually looked pretty good. It's a, it's a heavy movie, and they not only built an atmosphere pretty, he pretty heavy around it, but most of the visuals were pretty appealing. And now, after all this backlash, if I'm being true to myself, I really didn't hate it. Am I a fan? <laughs> no. Was I pretty disappointed? Yes. But was I also at least mildly entertained throughout? Yeah, yeah I was. I can't explain it, but I can't deny my gut feeling of enjoying parts of it and being overall entertained throughout its two and a half hour runtime. It has a ton of problems, the film was riddled with plot holes, but they still achieved a little entertainment, or a, a level of entertainment, I guess. But then my brain goes haywire. What was Lois Lane's purpose to have in the movie other than Superman saving her 18 times? Why are Batman's morals gone? Why does Superman never try to explain himself? Why did Doomsday look worse than the cave troll in 2001's Fellowship of the Ring? How do any of the villainous, scheme, villainous schemes even make sense? What were the incomprehensible dream sequences? Why was Wonder Woman my favorite character in a Batman versus Superman movie? My conclusion is this. Zack Snyder blatantly cannot tell this DC Universe story, and they need new writers to even give him a fighting chance. Hopefully when Justice League begins filming in just a mere few weeks, they will see the criticism and learn from it. I really want to like this universe and these movies. I really, really do. But it's kind of just not happening. There may be a straight triangle path to Superman's weaknesses, but there's a monotonous circle of madness that we, as an audience, are stuck dwelling in until this bird, no, plane, no, hero, can save us from. Had to be a little dramatic at the end, but. <laughs> it was earned. Um, and apparently, you weren't even as fond as I was. I hated this movie. <laughs> I hated this movie. Let's, let's hear it from you. I want to hear it from you. Um, this is a movie with a fundamental misunderstanding of the characters that it's making fight each other. I, this yeah. movie has a... Sup, the reason Superman and Batman work together is because they are exercises in contrast. Superman is the ray of optimism mm -hmm. who helps Earth be, even if he doesn't have to. Batman is the brooding hero who won't kill but will save the day and will do everything he can to keep Gotham clean so that people don't fall into the pitfall that he falls into. Mm -hmm. This movie does not even get those Maybe. simple, not even close. morally 
logistics right of these two characters. Superman, he broods the whole time. Yep. He's helping Earth out of this obligation. It's this obligation that he just feels like he needs to. But he, he, he needs to help doing he, it. Yeah, but he looks, he looks annoyed. Terrible. He looks annoyed yeah. doing it. And Batman. So you make him dark to keep that contrast. You have to make Batman darker. Batman's a psychopath. He's a serial yeah. killer. As Af Affleck is the best thing about the film, he gives Batman this little bit of edge and stuff. But he's just he's. It's a fundamental misrepresentation of what the characters yeah. are about. And I can go on and on about like yeah. all we, the negatives, but I have to boil down to just yeah. keep this concise. <laughs> and and no, the, no spoilers, but... The writing man. is atrocious. Yeah. The yeah. writing is... Why anybody does anything in this movie does not make any sense. Things jump from one scene to the other. The pacing and the editing is awful. 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 The pacing oh and the editing gosh. is really bad because Terrible. scenes follow other scenes that don't make sense. It's cramming about 80 minutes of story into a two and a half hour movie, so it's padding. Yeah. And then we actually then get just... to the fight. After we waste all this time, it's five minutes. It's very, it's terrible. It's very, very it's slow so and monotonous, bad. and the choreograph, it's the just, choreography, choreography is just, is bad. just... And this is a so, film that wanted to do what Marvel does with its universe, but it just but doesn't want to do the rushing, work to get there. It. How the script got approved is beyond me. This was not written by fans. No. This was written by people that don't understand why we want yeah. to see Batman and Superman together. This is written by people who are like, oh, if we pit them together against each other, right? But that'll be there's cool. Not even, there's not a great reason they fight, and there's no, not a great reason for why people do things. There's not a great reason for why this person is here, why this happened, why they hate this person. It's just, it just kind of like, just because. I, I kind of, I, I, we, kinda, we pride that. ourselves on not doing spoilers on the show. But yeah. I kind of wish we devoted like a half an oh, hour, really? like a whole show to the spoiler thing for this movie, because... <sighs> You can go piece by piece throughout yeah, you can and just watch apart, the like, entire thing crumble. Yeah, you really can. Um, positives? And, 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 and by the way, if you were to take your kids to this movie, you would be, you would be pissed. It's not for this kids. This is not... This movie's for no one. This movie <laughs> is for no one. It's really, it's really not. This like, movie is... It's a movie that assumes you know Batman and Superman's history, so it does right. nothing with the characters. But then it insults you by going certain places, and then it doesn't, and then it'll explain this, but they go too far into this, and it's like, pick one. But, th yeah, exactly. It assumes you know Batman and Superman, but then it insults you by showing... Bruce Wayne's parents die four times. Yeah, like no, we no, we got that. We knew that in we knew that back in '98 and yeah, earlier. Yeah, it's just earlier. It's, it's such just, a fundamental disappointment. Yeah, it's at the very least I wanted it to be entertaining, and it's boring, and it's dull, and it takes itself that's way the, too seriously. I mean, okay, Batman's a dark hero, but yeah, he's a I man mean, in a bat suit at the end of the day, like fighting right. an alien. Someone right. needs to crack a smile. Did nowhere. And the only person nowhere. that cracks a smile in the nowhere. entire movie what? is Wonder Woman. And it was great. That and was great. her five minutes are great. Yeah. But again, the way she is written when she's not in the suit mm -hmm. is just to set up the Justice League stuff, yeah. which don't even get me started on that stuff. <laughs> that is, again, it's, it's a big trailer for a movie that's coming, but that I don't want to see at this yeah, point. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess it's kind of the same. I'm... I'm hopeful that they'll finally get it right, but I'm not excited. Yeah. I think we should get our ratings up because I could just keep going, but <laughs> I think I'm going to be nice and stop. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> this we should, is... We should, we should release like a, a separate one that are like I'll do a, heavy. I'll do an audio thing on this. It's just, I think we should. Because we can, we can... Because we can I, can go, I can go literally minute by minute by minute yep. and just... You have to... I have to look to find the good in this movie. Uh-huh. I, uh, I, I gave it a three and a half. I... I it, now, for me, and actually, I want to address this. For me, a lot of it comes from here, but a lot of it does come from my gut, and my gut tells me that I didn't hate it. So somewhat generously, I threw it a five and a half, but I'm, I'm not a fan. I didn't hate it, but I'm not a fan. I'm just, I don't know. I'm a little, I'm pretty disappointed. I'm very disappointed. That'll do it for our review of Batman v Superman, which, as a concept, is such a hostile thing to think about. Two of the biggest heroes of all time facing off against each other? <sighs> That got Andrew and I wondering, what if other famous movie and TV characters face each other in a battle, and who would win? We took it to the students of Marist College, and we asked them to decide some of these fights for us. This is Seats on the Street. Seats on the Street victim. Say your name. Laura. We are here with Laura. Laura, because we saw Batman vs Superman over the weekend, and the fight was a little disappointing, we want to come up with some fights that we might think are better. So for the first one, who would win in a fight? The Mighty Eagles from Lord of the Rings or the Diglets in Pokemon? Uh, 
Um, well, personally, I've never played Pokemon or know much about it, so I'm going to vote for the Eagles just because they're really cool, and I guess they saved the day in Lord of the Rings, so I think they'd win. Alright, so I want to know who you guys think would win in a better fight. Woody from Toy Story or Indiana Jones? Oh, Indiana Jones. Yeah? yeah. I don't know. Woody's pretty crafty. Oh, I think we have our own, we have our own <laughs> fight right now. What are you guys' names? Tom. Tom? Noah. We got Tom versus Noah now. Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. or The Minions? How many minions are there? We'll go three. three? We'll, we'll see there's three of them. Not an army, because you're right, that's too much. Yeah, oh. yeah Joseph just shoot him. Alright. What do you use my childhood? Alright. <laughs> Probably Mike Wazowski. You think Mike is still gonna win? I mean, Monsters Inc. was my favorite movie as a kid. Really that's true, it is a great movie. Yeah. And I think if they I think if they have a code 2319, right. I think then I think it's over. Then it's over. Yeah, it's gotta be. You can't. <laughs> 2319! We have a 2319! <laughs> Breaking Bad? That's true. Perfect. Ron Swanson or Mike from Breaking Bad? Ooh, that's tough. I think Mike's more of a fighter. Ron Swanson's more of just an all-around man. You ever see him sleep fight, though? Actually, I don't remember him sleep fight. Was he good at that? He was, he was the best. Ooh, so if they're sleep boxing, I think that Ron Swanson would win. Uh -huh. But if they were awake, especially if they could plan it out, that's would good. Ron, wake up. <coughs> Ron, wake up. It's Leslie. Yeah. Oh, God. Are you having a bad dream? No, I suffer from a disorder called sleep fighting. It must be terrible. Only when I'm losing. Question, who would win in a fight? The little engine that could, or the brave little toaster? <laughs> the little engine that could. The brave little toaster. Of course, I, I love it. Now, now, we need, now we need a reason why. I don't, know who, I don't know who the little engine that could, so... I don't, know, go, I don't know the brave little toaster. How do you not know the little engine? <laughs> I'm a, I like Disney, so... Give, give us a comeback. He's a toaster. What do you mean he's a he's, he's yeah, a toaster? This, this, this is a great fight. He's a toaster, that's why. Kermit the Frog or Big Bird? Big Bird. Wow, we got a little bias, but that's okay. Thank you for the answer. Alfred, Batman's Butler, or Lois Lane, Superman's girlfriend? I'm gonna have to say Batman's Butler. You think so? I'm gonna have I gotta ask you a reason why. I mean, Lois Lane. Are we referring to like Lois Lane and like Batman Superman Lois? Like that Lois Lane? No, no, I don't think so. Lois? You. Who do you think you would win? Star Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy or Buzz Lightyear? Ooh, Buzz Lightyear. Really? Why? Uh, I'm biased though because I love Toy Story, but probably Buzz Lightyear because he can. He just has really cool colors and he has like that little cool little. That makes a lot plastic of sense. Plastic thing. It's got a plastic thing that Star Lord does <laughs> right, not have. So. You are a sad, strange little man. Rick Tamlin from Anchorman or Alvin and the Chipmunks? Oh, Rick Tamlin. Yeah, Rick Tamlin. Why? Because <laughs> uh, he's Rick and he has blue as like a super powered gun in the uh, Anchorman 2. Gun from the future. And what is he? Yeah, he has the trident. He stabbed it. And he killed too. the guy. Yeah. Rick, where'd you get a hand grenade? I don't know. Who would win in a fight? Johnny from Dirty Dancing or Nick from 500 Days of Summer? Definitely Johnny. Why? I mean, I haven't seen him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, like, picks her up. He does the lift thing. We gotta be strong for that. I, I quit, folks. <laughs> Seen Dirty Dancing, but that looks ridiculous. Yeah, me neither. And I, I love the ending. Sit down, Johnny. Okay. <laughs> like, poor guy. I think he lost at everybody. Anyways, I think a lot of people's votes were based on whether they've seen the movie or not. Yeah, everybody was like, because I like Toy Story as my childhood. Uh, I think excuse I'm, me. I'm, I'm, you know what I've learned from the show? We're what pretty tone deaf. We don't know what anybody else watches. We just watch what we like, <laughs> and let's assume everybody else has seen it. I mean, we were asking Toy Story and like Star Wars. Those are pretty popular. It's I not know, like we a win. lot of people. A lot of people watch. A lot of people don't watch movies for weird reasons. Like some people will watch Star Wars because they don't like aliens. Or like some people will watch- They'll watch Star the, Wars because the, they don't like aliens? Yeah, they don't watch Star Wars. Oh, yeah. okay. They I was don't like, watch I, Star Wars because they don't like aliens. Or, or they'll watch Gravity because they won't watch Gravity because they don't like space. Uh, I, 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 I know, actually, you know what, you're right. I've heard that. My, um, my cousin's boyfriend was, I had like a 
15 minute conversation Ooh. about uh, Interstellar. He hated it and I liked it and he goes, but I don't like any movie in space. So I was like, I just wasted 15 minutes talking to you. Like, what was the point? <laughs> so, I love, I love well, you just got me heated <laughs> over nothing. Damn. <laughs> People can get to you easy. <laughs> Especially when they say ex machina is predictable. Ignorance. It's such ignorance. ignorance. It's so ignorant. Anyways, well, we can't say who wins the fight between Batman and Superman, but we know that this has been a knockout episode of MCTV's The Middle Seeds. Yes, it has. Email us with any questions, comments, or concerns, and whatever else is on your mind, folks. For past episodes of The Middle Seats, even, visit our YouTube page, MCTV HD. We're changing things up a little next week. We'll be talking about some good old-fashioned television. Stay tuned for that. That'll do it for us. I'm Andrew Oje. And I'm Jay Kensler. Keep that seat warm, everyone, but not too warm, because if it's really, really hot, it might be Superman's heat vision. And in that case, you better wear your Superman undies. And it burns. Undies? Yeah, you super... There's a room in a hotel in New York City that shares our feelings.